Let's take a look at Quasar's knob component, which is basically just the circular progress component, except it's interactive. So you can actually touch it and change the value on the screen. Let's do an example. Q dash knob. And then let's say V dash model is equal to value because we're going to need a value. So let's yank ref out of here. And then we'll say here setup. And then we will return an object. And that object will be the value. Then we can say const value is equal to a reference to, and how about we set that to 20 by default? And there we go. We've got a circular progress component and we can change the value there. Really, really cool. And what I might actually do is model it under here as well so that you can see what's going on behind the scenes in terms of the data. Value. And there you have it. How about we change this to a div and we'll say Q dash margin or extra large, just to kind of separate those two a little bit. Cool, all right, what else can we do? Let's play around with this. We can also change the step. So by default, it is between zero and it goes all the way up to 100. So we can change the steps though. Notice that it will go one at a time by default. This can be equal to something like five. And now when I move the knob, it's going to jump from one step to the next. Pretty cool. And that can be handled, especially for things like volume control, where you don't literally want to increment it by one at a time. You want to show the percentage, but you don't want to increment it by one at a time. Another thing we can do is change the size, and let's set that to extra large so that this is bigger to play with. Or maybe we need a pixel size here, like 62 pixels. There we go. I might even go with something like 200 pixels. Nice. Now it's going to be easier to mess around with. We can change the color. Let's make it indigo, nice. And then we can do other stuff like changing the center color and the track color. So let's say center color is equal to indigo dash one. So we get that nice indigo color in the center. And then let's make the track color indigo dash two. Nice, so now it's very obvious where you need to basically pull to bring this component around. We can also change the thickness of this outside section here. Let's say thickness, and I'm gonna set that equal to 0 0.5. And basically, one is going to be 100% thickness. So look at this, if I set this to one, notice that it goes all the way to the center, so it's kind of like a pie. That might be the effect you want. And then you can say 0 0.1, which is going to be 10% thickness. And let's land this on maybe 20% thickness. That's probably a good one for this example. We can also tell it to show the value. So let's get rid of this under here and say show dash value. And then it's gonna pop up in the center there. Really, really nice. We can also set the default slot. So let's come in here and say default, just to check if that works. And it does. So we can manually pluck out the value here by saying value. And then you could say 20%. How cool is that? You might also want to throw an icon in here. So we could say Q dash icon, and let's give that a name equal to volume underscore up. There we go. And if you wanted, you could maybe get rid of the percentage and you could probably even make that icon dynamic so that it changes as the volume changes. That could be a cool effect. We can also change the minimum and maximum value. So by default, like I said before, zero is the minimum and 100 is a maximum. Let's set the minimum equal to 100 and then the maximum equal to 200. Since we had the default at 20, that's actually showing nothing at all. Let's come in here and change the default to 120 because it's going to need to be over the minimum, over 120 in order to show a value now. And then if we go halfway, that should be 150 because that's halfway between 100 and 200. There we go, 150. And then this is gonna bring us up to 200. Pretty cool. That might be useful, for example, if you want a volume that can go all the way from zero to 150. So it kind of gets to 100%, but then compensates to make the volume a little bit louder. That could be a good effect. We can also change the offset angle. Offset dash angle. And let's set that to somewhere between zero and 360. So if I say 180 there, oh, that's not working because it's just angle. I don't need the word offset there. Cool. 
And this probably works a bit better with a smaller value. So let's come back down here and change that value to 20. So this is easier to de demonstrate. And now if I come up here, that means that we're going to start at 180 degrees. And if we said 90, then it would start at 90 degrees. And then of course, zero is going to be the default where it starts at the very top there. So that could be helpful for you. And two more things I wanna show you are disable, which basically means that we can't change that anymore. And then read only. And honestly, if it's read only, you pretty much just got a circular progress component with all of the functionality for changing it, except you can't actually change it. So really this is just like using a normal circular progress component. In other words, if your component is not going to be live, if you don't want the user to be able to change it, then just use the circular progress component. But maybe you wanna be able to toggle read only on and off. In that case, you might actually want to use the knob component. Read only is set to true, so I can't change it. But then we could be modeling some data that then sets that to false, which then allows me to change it. Really cool. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Come join me on another video and we'll dive into something else.